Over the last few months, our Women Walking with God community emails have been focused on hospitality and ways to serve others. I happened to learn about an incredible first century example of hospitality and wanted to share it with you. I'm Samantha Corcoran, and this past summer, my husband Ryan and I traveled to Greece to follow in the footsteps of the Apostle Paul. While we were visiting Corinth, we took a quick side trip to Cancrea and learned about a believer named Phoebe. She was a patron of the church there and cared for members, but her hospitality went way beyond her local church. Paul selected her for a sacred mission to hand deliver his letter to the Christians in Rome, which we now know as the Book of Romans. I was curious to learn more about Phoebe and what it meant for her to be Paul's letter carrier and envoy to Rome. The only mention of Phoebe in scripture is in Paul's glowing recommendation letter for her in Romans 16 verses 1 and 2. Paul writes, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Kincrea. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people and to give her any help she may need from you, for she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. But Paul doesn't explicitly state that Phoebe is my letter carrier, so how do scholars know that she carried this letter? We can tell by the format of the letter and the request to receive her. First, these verses actually use the standard format of a Greco-Roman recommendation letter, but with a Christian twist. Letter writing was very popular in the ancient world, and we have thousands of examples from Cicero, Seneca, Pliny the Younger, and others that use a similar template. While Paul doesn't always name his letter carriers, he does mention them by commending them in this section of the letter. Next, Paul also asked the Roman churches to receive her in the Lord. The Greek verb used here is commonly used in diplomatic correspondence for receiving a messenger. And the same verb occurs in Philippians 2.29, where Paul asks the church in Philippi to receive Epaphroditus. Paul clearly regarded all his letter carriers as ministry colleagues. They are all commended and given titles. And Paul describes Phoebe using two specific titles, prostatis and diakonos. Let's take a closer look at each term. Phoebe is given the title of benefactor, or in Greek, prostatis. This is the feminine form of the word that means patron, leader, defender, or guardian. Paul presents Phoebe as a wealthy patron, a respected leader, and one who used her resources to help him and other Christians. As a side note, my previous video on Lydia explained the Roman patronage system and how Lydia was also a patron who supported Paul. Go take a look. As a patron, Phoebe would have been financially contributing to Paul's mission, which likely included funding the writing of the letter. Letter writing was an expensive process in the ancient world, and Romans is not a short letter. In fact, I just finished a fascinating book by E. Randolph Richards about Paul and ancient letter writing, and he estimates that the process of writing the 979 lines of Romans probably cost over $2,200 in today's money. That would have included the cost of several drafts, the preparation of a nice copy for dispatch, and a copy for Paul to retain. As patron, Phoebe likely funded the writing of the letter, paying the professional secretary, and covering her own travel costs to deliver it to Rome. The second title Paul uses to describe Phoebe is the Greek term diakonos, or deacon. It's shown right here in Papyrus 46, our oldest copy of Romans. What does it mean that she was a deacon? This is where our modern usage of the word can cause some misunderstanding. It turns out the official office of deacon as we know it today didn't actually begin until a couple hundred years later in the 4th century. The word diakonos is sometimes translated deacon, servant, or minister. But these are no ordinary servants. We see that Paul used this term to describe an agent with a sacred commission, such as carrying a letter. In fact, Phoebe joins an exclusive club of Paul's letter carriers and fellow diakonos. I've listed them here, so feel free to pause the video if you'd like to look these up. If you've ever studied the Book of Romans, you know it is a challenging letter, and you need a good understanding of the Hebrew Bible. Additionally, the way Greek was written back then, the letters would have all been in capitals, no spaces between words, no punctuation, and no paragraphs. 
So like the other letter carriers, Phoebe would have played an important role in answering questions and ensuring that the letter was understood correctly, what some have called an authoritative interpreter. Think about the churches in Rome who likely also had questions. Phoebe would have been the first to respond to those as Paul's trusted envoy. So as a deacon, Phoebe's role was to learn the theology from Paul so she could help explain his letter and then to hand carry it across the Mediterranean Sea to the churches in Rome. So what was it like to travel from Corinth in Greece all the way to Rome in Italy? Back then, the perilous journey took nearly a month. Phoebe would have had to travel both by sea and by land, and she had to time it just right with the weather. Ship travel on the Mediterranean was only done between April and October, so she likely went in late spring and summer. She would have paid fare on a merchant or passenger ship in Corinth and spent two weeks on the ship headed to an Italian port, likely Brundisium. From there, she may have hired a comfortable carriage called a Carpentum to travel the 370 miles to Rome on the roads. She would have had luggage with her, including extra shoes, a brimmed hat, and several capes for different types of weather. And she would have had to keep the letter dry and protected during this journey, likely in a leather document box called a capsa. We actually have evidence that a letter sent from Rome to Brundisium reached the recipient in six days and on to Athens in 21 days. And Athens is not very far from Corinth. When Phoebe arrived in Rome, she would have been warmly welcomed by ready-made friends, the same ones listed in the remainder of chapter 16. And she may have even stayed with Priscilla and Aquila during her time in Rome, who were well known for their hospitality. What an incredible journey Phoebe had with this papyrus letter. 20 plus days total, with two weeks at sea and 370 miles on land. That is a monumental effort for a group of people that she's never met before, many of whom were strangers to her. It has been said that Romans is the greatest letter ever written because of its great impact in history, its grand theology about Christ, and its practical instructions for Christian living. And Paul trusted this letter's delivery and exposition to a sister he considered a partner in his ministry. Phoebe. Now that's an example of Christian hospitality, bringing the message of the gospel to strangers through your actions. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news.